Hello crafty friends, it's Izzy Chocolate here. Today I'm going to show you how to uh, cut a, a stamped image on your scan and cut machine. So I have gone ahead and I have cut these, this happy birthday stamp and I've, I've done it in three different colours and so we can see how it is picked up on the scanner in the different colours. This is the, the big stamp, um, it's a woodware it's a lovely big stamp that I do toppers with and so I wanted a few for some birthday cards so I thought I'd just pop on and make a little tutorial on it so that you can see how easy it is to do this sort of thing on your scan and cut. So we're going to cut this out with a border just like you would if it had been cut out with a die so a small white border and then I'm going to cut a layer with a corresponding colour afterwards. And so I'm now going to pop my video onto the screen of the scan and cut and we can get started. Right, so we are over at my machine and you should be able to hopefully see the screen of the scan and cut quite clearly there. So I have recently restuck my mat and so it is nice and sticky i've got these three pieces of card that i've stamped on and so we're going to get started so i'm just going to feed my mat in and we are going to do a scan to a direct cut direct cut me just means that you're going to cut the image out that's on your mat and you're not going to save it anywhere but we are going to use the machine to convert the stamped image into a cutting file. And so we'll click on the machine. And I have got black and white recognition mode on at the moment. I'm going to leave that so we can see what happens and see if these colours are dark enough to be picked up. So we'll click on start. And that's now just going to scan through and hopefully pick up those images. So as you can see, it's recognising there. It does take about 20 seconds or 30 seconds or so. And it, uh, it looks like it's um, scanned, scanned the images nicely. And so we'll say OK. And then this is all the cutting. <laughs> it looks a hot mess, doesn't it? Um, this is all the, the cutting marks that are on my mat. And so we need to um, get rid of those so the machine doesn't want to pick them up and cut them. So by dragging this little arrow in from the corner, we can make the cutting area that the machine is going to recognise exactly what we would like it to be. And so I'm just going in to the edge, the bottom here, and I'm going up to there. And you can see just between my pieces of paper that... Uh, there is um, all the marks from the cutting machine underneath. I'll show you how to get rid of those as we go along. I could have put the pieces of card jammed up to each other, um, but to be honest, I didn't think much about it, but that's not an issue. We can get rid of that. And so I think it's picked up the majority of that. We're going to zoom in so that we can have a good look. And we can zoom in to 400%. And... I'm not sure if you can see on the screen there, but there is a little black line going around the whole lot of that. Just have a look at this one. Uh, yep, so that's picked that up. And then we want to go downwards. Let's have a look at this green one. Yep, that's all got that nicely. And the pink one has two. So I'm really happy that has picked that up. I have actually stamped this with a stamping block because I know that everybody doesn't have a um, stamping platform. And I thought I will do it today so that you can see with one stamp whether the machine will pick it up or not. Um, I inked up my stamp really well. and when I stamped it onto the white um, card, I held it in place 
for probably 30 seconds or so just to make sure that the ink was going to um, soak into the paper and give me a good image and so I'm really happy with that I think that that looks great so I'm going to say okay um, to try and get rid of all these little bits in the middle here we can do ignore object size and so oh uh, let me just go mm -hmm. Let's just go back and, yes, it has, I wondered if the uh, edge of my mat had, um, the arrow had got, had disappeared, but it hadn't. But obviously when you do this, then it picks this all up again, but it doesn't matter. So we're going to um, just increase this. And as we increase this, I'm hoping that these will start to disappear. And if they don't, there's another way that we can do it. Well, it, they must be all joined together because we're now up to an inch and it's not got rid of them. So that's not going to work. But if you had any little bits or marks, if you've got a little dot of ink or something on here and the machine had picked it up, you could eliminate it by doing this. Um, and you can increase this up to the size of your stamp. My stamp is big. It's probably about four or four inches, I should think, four or five inches wide by two or three, two and a half inches um, tall. And so I could increase this up to that. Um, but I'm just going to try another way and, um, and just see uh, uh, if it works on there. But while we're on this screen, I just want to go into here. So if your cutting line hasn't picked up um, all the way around your stamped image, then you can go into here and we can increase the darkness or the lightness. And so you just need to um, move it up. If it has, if your machine hasn't picked it up, go up to darker and then preview, see if that's better if it's you can go up another darkness as well don't automatically go up to the darkest um because that might not be necessary and see if it work if it's not working that way then you can bring it back this way and see if it's going to work on this way it's a little bit of trial and error but hopefully if you do that either way it's going to pick your image up better so this is what would happen if you've moved it it will just go through and recognize again and then we'll say okay and so i'm just going to go on to the next screen so i'm going to go on to edit to see if we can get rid of these little marks in between i'll see what's going to be cut so at the moment this uh, by looking at this screen it tells you exactly what is going to be cut and so at the moment, this orange block here is going, is going to the machine is thinking that is one image to cut. And then if we go with the arrows, you can see it's going to pick up the appy without the H. And so it's thinking that that is another word. And we can keep doing this and it should pick up the next happy. And then it's got the H, then it's got the H, then that one's picking up the whole birthday word. That's got the day and the birth separately and the H and the appy and the A and the birth and the appy and the H. So what that says to me is that it's going to try to cut all those words separately. And that's because when you um when we actually look at it i'll just take this one off here and pop this in front of the screen when we ooh, where's the screen <laughs> uh, when we look at the word can you see that the h is not connected to the a and that's why it's wanting to cut that as one individual uh the h as one individual letter and the appy as another um and the same with the birth and the day because the H and the D are not connected. And so the, this machine is really clever 
and it that is what it is actually thinking now if we put a border on at the moment it's picking up the cut and line of the um image the outside edge of that image if we put a border on of 0.4 i'm hoping that is going to join it all up but if you're doing this and that doesn't happen and it doesn't join it all up then you just need to connect so you'd need to connect that H and the A with a little pencil line and you'd need to connect this H and D here with a little pencil line, just a light pencil line. And then the it will fool the machine into thinking that that whole image is connected together and it will cut it all as um, the happy and the birthday. Then to get it to cut as a whole image, we need to connect the top word to the bottom word. So just here, if we put another little line, pencil line there and a little pencil line there, then when it's coming down, the machine is coming down here with a blade, instead of wanting to come in this gap, it will pick up your pencil line and go straight past it and it'll go around the edge of the rest of the word. And the same here, it won't try and get through that gap there either and so i'm just going to pop a little pencil line on mine and then we will pop it through the scanner again and so it can pick it up as one whole okay so i've done that on my images on my mat i'm now going to clear what we've got on the screen here so i'm going to press the home button and I'm going to say OK to delete all the patterns because I want to start from scratch again. So we're going to go scan, direct cut to the machine and start. I wanted to do that so that you could see exactly what is necessary to... Uh, oh, right. Stop scanning. Set the scanner level to position two when scanning a thicker material such as felt or foam. Well, it's exactly the same as the paper that I've just spread through. I <laughs> wonder why it's doing that. Ah, right. Okay. I don't think that that was quite necessary. It's exactly the same piece of paper as I was putting through before. I'm not going to move my button to... <laughs> Um, two to the number two. I'm just going to try again. Let's see. I don't think it got stuck anywhere at the back. Let's try again. Yeah, it's going through this time. Obviously had a little blip there. Yes, as I was saying, I wanted to do that so you could see exactly what you needed to do to connect your image up so it cuts as one. And so let's have a, another little look here. And just zoom in. I like to always zoom in and just check that my image has, has been picked up. Now, can you see there? Can you see I have now got a little line going down there between the Y's? And there's a tiny little one here um, at the H, which is brilliant. And so that's now... Picking that up as whole one whole image. It's picked them all up nicely. Okay, and so we're going to carry on to preview again. This is where we were before. And so we are going to go on to, and you can see there now that is one whole word, and hopefully, fingers crossed with the following wind, they will all be the same. Yeah, oh, so now that's the line between my mat. And this is the other way that I said we could get rid of any little dots and things that the machine thinks it should cut. So you can see there, it's picked up all the um, marks on my mat between these pieces of paper. So we can just pop that into the bin and get rid of it. Do you want to delete it? Yes, we do. So then it's going across to another one. We can bin it. We can bin that one. Oops, I didn't hit the bin. Bin that one.
So anything it picks up other than my big image, obviously I don't want that one. And so there's something right out on the very edge here now. So we'll bin that. And then do the same for all these little bits across here. And there's one right on the edge. And then we've gone down to the happy birthday. And then we've gone straight back up to the other image. So now that um, the machine is just going to cut my images. And so I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to go into this little circle with the arrows. That is the inset offset. And so we're going to do an outline distance. So I want to put on um, a little white border all the way around my stamped image. And so I'm going to put on 0 0.4. And that will now have um, extended the cutting line um, around the outside of my word. You could do 0 0.8. Let's have a look at that one. Um, actually, 0 0.8 looks like it's going to be even better. Oh, I really like that. Yep, I'm going to go 0 0.8. So just have a look between um, 0 0.4 and 0. Sorry, 0 0.04 and 0 0.08. Um, and see which one you like the best, you like the look of best. Um, this one I can really see, it's very clear and it looks really nice. It's going to cut as one image and will make me a super topper. And so I'm going to leave it there and then we'll be ready for cutting. So I'm just going to find my spatula, which I think is under here. And I'm just going to press my paper down again. And it's been on there for a little while while I've been chatting. And now you can see the shape of those images that the machine wants to cut. So we're just going to select what we want to do. We want to cut. And then uh, I'm on an SDX machine and so this is an automatic blade and it's going to pick up the depth of my paper automatically. It does a little tiny cut to start off with at the top of the paper and it will ascertain at what depth the blade needs to be. Now if you're on a CM machine you will have to set your blade depth and so depending on the thickness of your paper then you will know or <laughs> if you're new to the machine you might not know but you should get to know what numbers your blade needs to be on for the different weights of paper. Um, I had a CM machine before I had this SDX and I a little notebook where I kept um, little, a little clip of paper about a couple of inches square and for all the different types of card that I used regularly, whether it was Miri card, it was plain white card, it was coloured card, whatever it was, I would do some test cuts with it until I found the blade depth and um, the pressure and the speed that I needed. And I would make a note of it on that piece of card in my, and stick it in my notepad. And so whenever I picked up a piece of card, I could just open my notepad, see exactly what I needed to set my blade pressure and speed to. And then I would be off. And so then you don't have to have any uh, doubts whether your machine is going to cut properly. The only other thing that would affect the machine cutting properly is whether your mat is sticky enough. And it's holding your paper firmly into place. I have found in the past that if the paper, if your paper is not stuck onto your mat firmly all the way across, then it is likely that there might be parts of it that don't cut very well. I know that some people, when their mats are not um, very sticky, that they use painter's tape or washi tape or something like that to stick the card down well that's fine sticking the edges but it's not actually helping in the middle and so yes it's going to keep your piece of card in position but it still might not make sure that you get a very good cut the machine will only cut properly if your card is adhered underneath your image and so 
it's really easy to re-stick your mats. It only takes um, it takes a, a minute or so to do it, and then the stuff that I use takes about ten minutes to dry, and then I can start cutting again. And so you just need to get some you need to get some of the right stuff to re-stick your mat. Um, yeah, and so we're now ready to cut, and so let's say start. I use my little spatula, this little thing. I use this to press down on the card as the machine is. Think about what it's gonna do. And so if I can, I will try and move you down so that you can see what is going on. And there we are, that's done. We are back up to the screen and finish cutting. So we'll say OK. And before I take my mat out off of the machine, I'm just going to check that everything is cut out nicely and it has. It looks super. All right, so here we are back. So all we need to do now is get a little spatula and pull off. Excellent. So there we are. Got some nice little toppers. So just to show you exactly what we've cut, look at that, isn't that smashing? It's cut all the way around the H, around the up and down, giving it a lovely, lovely shape. And just this little mark that I did there um, and here with the pencil have joined that up in that smashing. Okay, so now we've cut the uh, words out. Before we get rid of these off of the screen, we're now going to use these to cut the layer for underneath. And so I'm gonna put these colors, uh, I've got a lovely green, miri, I've got a dark red and a burgundy color. I'm going to put them onto my mat and then we're going to cut the layers with them. So what we need to do is we need to, this at the moment is the same size as the image we've just cut. So we need to go back and make that bigger. And to do that, we're going to go into the outline distance and then depending on how much bigger you want your layer, you would then increase this size to 0. 0.12 or 0. 0.16. And so I'm going to go for 0. 0.16 today and uh, show you what that looks like. <clears throat> and so I'm going to stick my card down now. My spatula. I like to run my spatula over. So I'm just going to tell you what happened. When I got to um, the uh, images cutting out, and you saw that last picture of the screen on my scan and cut of the outline, I stopped the video because my other half called me and asked me to do something and I got carried away, forgot what I was doing here. By the time I come back, my machine had switched it, switched the screen off and I thought, oh no, the screen has switched off. I bet I've lost my patterns. And so, uh, yes, I had lost my patterns. When I turned it back on again, it was just on the start screen. So I thought, oh, what have I got to do now? Have I got to stamp more images and do all this cut and out like again? And just thought about it for a moment. And then I thought, no, I know what I can do. I can just piece them together like a jigsaw puzzle. And so, as you can see, I have just put my three pieces of card back on my mat. And I've just popped these in like a jigsaw puzzle. And so, let me just pop that one back in there. I've gone over with my little spatula to make sure that they all press in and there's nothing that's going to get caught. And I'll do this one as this one's now going in. And so I'm now going to start off from scratch again. Hopefully I'm going to fill the machine um, because it looks just like the stamped images. I'm sure that this is going to work and we can quickly just whip through to where we were without actually doing the cut. So I'm going to do scan, direct cut to the machine, and I'm going to start. And I'm just going to do this as that's going in. 
and then you'll see it come out again hopefully all in place yeah that's all in place lovely so let's go back up to the screen okay so we're back up on the screen and i'm just going to go through this process quickly because you know exactly what i did before and then i'm going to put on my 0.8 that one doesn't look quite right does it It looks like it's got a double cut edge. Let's see what it comes up with. Yeah, that one's got a double cut edge. Hmm, well, it obviously picked up a little shadow, I think. <laughs> Just going to go back and don't know why that's done that on that one when all the others these are really fabulous that one's just got a double line i don't know can't see um can i go into here yeah it's trying to cut there's just obviously a tiny little weenie gap there where it's, just, it's trying to cut both um i think if i increase it it's going to be all right. Well, let's see what happens. Right, so that is where the um, images are just cut out. What we need to do to make the layer uh, for, for the image to sit on. So we're going to go back. We're going to increase this outline distance. It would have said 0 0.8. That's where I was before. I was on 0 0.8. Um, because that's what I cut my images on. And so um, we're going to have to pretend that 0 0.00 is 0 0.08. And I'm going to put on another 0 0.08. So if you're cutting this straight after your image, you will have... Am I talking rubbish here? No, I'm not. Because this is this is taken... Yeah, this is scanned around the cut line, which was 0 0.08. That's right. So I am correct. <laughs> so I'm I'm adding on 0 0.08. But if you're doing this straight after you've cut the image, yours would have already said 0 0.08 when you went back on your arrow. And so you will then increase it up to 0 0.12 or 0.16 and so this is my 0.16 and so let's say okay and okay and now this is the size that we want to cut the layer with so i'm just going to peel all these bits off of my mat and then I'm going to put on my coloured card. Because um, I can't move these images, I need to just take a, can't do a background scan. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to look at each of these squares as an inch coming down and going across. And so my card for these ones needs to be at least three inches three inches deep and one two three four five six seven eight say eight and a half so say nine inches across so i need to cover that area with my piece of card so my piece of card actually measures three and an eighth and it measures nine and a half inches wide which is perfect and then the one that i'm going to put on underneath it needs to go from here which is through about three just three and a half just needs to be about three and a half down to uh, this line is six so it's just over six inches and so i'm gonna go from just underneath the bottom of the first piece that i've put on and it needs to be in that position there so that's from one two about two inches across so let's put it from two inches across to just past six 
six inches across and that looks like that will do fine and then the one underneath that I need to have as um, about a half an inch underneath that and in the same area of the mat so as long as that goes past uh, six inches seven inches, eight inches nine inches as long as it goes past nine inches we are going to be spot on so let me just stick all that on the mat and then i'll show you what i've done there we are so you can see that's how i've laid my card on my mat so that's going to pick up them same areas so i'm going to set this to cut um, so we're going to select what we want to do we want to cut and then we're going to hit start so i like to just do this whilst it's going in just to make sure it's going to stick on nicely And so it's now cutting out the layer. Oh wow, yes, we've got that done nicely. So that looks good. And so just check. Let's cut. Yep, cut perfectly. So let's take that off of there. And let's grab the green. So there we are. Look at that. So we've got that nice layer. Yeah, that's perfect. I think you can, yeah, that's ready. You can see that on there, can't you? See that? It's lovely. So that's the green one. And let's look at the red one. There's the red one. Can you see? Yeah, I think you can. I need to get a piece of white card. Hang on a second. Um, yeah, let's just pop that on there like that. Yeah, so that will glue on there nicely like that. So that's that one. Um, let's have a look at this one so that's that one's worked really well all i've got to do is to rub out these pencil marks and i'm not sure if i actually said earlier in the tutorial but i did when we were looking at how the machine was picking up each of the sections because the h wasn't joined to the a and the h here wasn't joined to the b the machine was trying to make this into four sections and can you remember i said that we needed to join them up with pencil marks um we needed to join the y's and the h and the b and i talked about the these ones here being joined together they may join together with the um, outline that we put on but it didn't and I can't remember whether I said but I did have to put a tiny weeny if I bring that right up can you see there's a tiny weeny little um, pencil mark there and there's a tiny weeny one there and th that is how clever this machine is it was trying to cut in between there because there was a gap now that's it can be really frustrating but it just shows you that, that how clever the machine really is and and how fine-tuned it can be picking things up like that and so that's that one now let's have a look at this one that it's double cut and it's only double cut because my machine turned off um oh look at that that's pretty uh, let's just have a look and see i think yeah it's um where's my bit card it's cut the border off so this this is the border um which i could yeah i could i tell you what we could do we could just stick that on there like that and then i can fit that on there like a jigsaw puzzle and stick that down around it that will work that will work and so that's what I'm going to do. So there we are. This is what we've learnt today. We have learnt how to cut a stamped image with a 0.08 white border outline on the stamped image. And then we've learnt how to then extend that stamped image 
to make a layer for underneath and you can continue to do another one another one another one however many you want so you could make you know you could do another another colored layer here or you could do a white layer whatever so that you've got the different layers underneath your stamped image just by increasing that outline up by 0 0.4 0 0.8 whatever it is that you want to increase your size by we've also learnt that we need to join up the letters in each of the words to make sure that the image will cut as one i've shown you how to check to see whether the image is going to cut as one or if the image is going to cut as two or three or four pieces and we've also learnt how to rectify that by putting these tiny little pencil marks in even in the smallest of places and so I need to now just rub them out and um, and then nobody will ever know make sure that you've got a not a really really sharp because you only just want to do a very light pencil line here so you don't want a really sharp point but you you just want to do a very light pencil line where you need to join it up and then when you're rubbing out some of the pencils have like rubbers on the end here um, this is a white rubber but a lot of them have red rubbers and don't use the red rubber because that will make a little mark on your papers it's best to use let me just get one it's best to use a white rubber like something like this just check before you do your rubbing out whether you've got a clean you know whether this is clean like that edge there it's got all pencil mark on it so i'd rub that rub that off and make that clean so you can see it's made a little dirty mark on there so just rub your rubber until you've got a clean end and then take this see if i can do it and then rub that mark off there yep and so that's now gone and i just need to do exactly the same over this side yep that one's gone and this one is so tiny that probably nobody would ever see it anyway um but and that one and that one there and the best thing is not to rub it out over top of your mat because all the bits will stick on your mat like they just as mine but that i was just doing that to uh to show you what we needed to do and so that's it for today hopefully um you have learned something from the tips and tricks that um i've given you in this tutorial today if you haven't already subscribed to my channel please click the button and hit the bell and um, this is going to be the first of a little series of tricks and tips for cutting and doing different things for beginners with the scan and cut and so let me know in the comments down below how you get on when you've uh, had a go with this yourself and so until next time take care bye bye